AI news is relentless. It never seems to slow down even a little. There have been huge announcements from all the biggest players, tons of new tools to try out, and like always, some weird ones. Before we jump into the really useful stuff you can experiment with yourself, I want to start with a quick run through of some AI integrated robots because a bunch of announcements have flooded in about them. First, and not the craziest, is this real life Dr. Octopus. Looks like we got competition. These are by a Japanese robotics company called Jizai Arms. They're AI powered and fully controllable by the user. The wearable base unit has terminals for up to six detachable robotic arms you can control. Looks like we may see some interesting cyborgs in the near future. And next we've got Sanctuary AI. They released this demo of their humanoid robot, Phoenix. Their mission is to create the world's first human-like intelligence in general purpose robots to help us work more safely, efficiently, and sustainably. Carbon is the name of their AI control system. It uses deep learning and reinforcement learning, coupled with modern LLMs to translate natural language into real world actions. There's been a lot of advanced humanoid robots in the works for a while, and now they're starting to incorporate large language models. Tesla had an announcement about Optimus this week as well. They're walking around and exploring, and they teach them more and more complex tasks. They also released some examples from their full self-driving system. Tesla gets left out of the AI conversation a lot, but they have super advanced AI models and have for a while. Now, a lot of these robots are being developed to accomplish tasks in various workplace settings, but it's only a matter of time before they're made for general consumers and around the house. Although they won't be in humanoid form at first. One example is this leak from Amazon where they're implementing it into their Astro home robot. They're calling it Burnham. Astro wasn't a big success, but this new version may end up with some useful capabilities. Amazon also had a job posting for AI powered search. In it, they talked about reimagining Amazon search with a new interactive conversational experience. That's enough about robotics. It's fun to check out, but let's talk about some stuff you can actually test for yourself. ChatGPT plugins are now available to anyone, but I'll talk about that in a little bit. I want to start with Google's text to music. I did a ton of these. It's been really fun. You can rate which one is better to help the model develop and you can download it if you want. It does the best job of any music generation platform I've seen. So I'm excited to see how this develops as they get feedback and develop from this test model. You can sign up to test this out. There is a wait list, but I was approved in like 10 hours. Here's something I just saw get posted from Hugging Face while I was finishing editing. It's really crazy, so I had to throw it in. I haven't dug deep, I just read the abstract and watched the demos, but you can download the code and experiment for yourself if you want. You drag the handles and you're able to manipulate the pose, shape, expression, and layout of all sorts of creatures and objects. It even has the ability to add an input, like to open the mouth of this lion. After following AI news for a while, you get used to seeing really big innovations, but this one is really blowing my mind. In video is a tool I started using for editing shorts. I've actually started posting one every single day on two channels since I started using it. It's a really intuitive and simple video editor with tons of templates and fast tools. I use Adobe Premiere for my long form videos because of all its capabilities, but it is extremely time consuming. A platform like NVIDIA makes it really fast, so I have been implementing it into my workflow. I'm actually probably going to start another faceless YouTube channel with the system I'm creating just because of how streamlined I can make everything. They have a full script to video feature. You input your script and it will generate the entire video finding relevant stock footage. It'll add transitions and it can even add the voice for you. It's pretty incredible. It gives you a great starting point in just a couple minutes instead of a couple hours like it would take in Premiere or Resolve. They have default templates or you can spend some time creating a nice format, then use that as your template for all your future videos in a given style. So it's free to test the platform and create videos, but you will need a paid account if you want to export it. I also bring this up because the trailer they released for their upcoming features looks amazing. Just pop some bubbles and you'll be right. No need to worry. It's a funny sight. You'll just input an idea, then it will create and edit your entire Imagine video. Imagine waking up to the sound of space-time being distorted each day. You can sign up for the waitlist for that right now to get early access. I definitely want to be one of the first to try it out. Midjourney 5.1 came out and a lot of images have gotten even better depending on what style you're trying to create. They also announced that they're working on text to 3D shapes. With how impressive their art generation is, I'm guessing they'll lead the pack there too. OpenAI also announced their text to 3D called Shape. It's 
Not great yet, but it's a good step in that direction. I haven't seen anyone very far along with this. Nyric released a preview for their AI world generation platform. They're building personalized AI generated gaming. You create your whole 3D world and environment with text prompts. This isn't available to test yet, but looks completely mind blowing. To think that we're almost to a time where you'll be able to generate any type of personalized game for yourself with some text prompts. Another one in the gaming realm is Unreal 5.2. They released a machine learning deformer sample. It's used to create high fidelity real-time character and deformations driven with full muscle, flesh, and cloth simulation. It is absolutely insane the amount of realism they're able to create. Tenweb is another tool I've started using personally. It's a website builder that's incredibly easy to use and is based on WordPress. So the website you create is fully customizable with endless possibilities for functionality. I did a deeper dive into them in my last video where I compared them against other AI website builders, but the short version is you can start from a text prompt, then it will create your full site with text and images, or you can also clone the layout of any web page. You just type in the URL and it will clone the layout, then you just replace it with your own content. It has an AI assistant built in to help with writing and brainstorming, and the 10 web builder is based on Elementor, so you can just use drag and drop editing to customize your site. Then you also have full access to the WordPress dashboard. So I chose that for my site. Being built on WordPress was one of the main reasons, since that's the most used and trusted platform, so it has endless tutorials and resources to learn from. It's free to test out and build your site, but it is paid if you decide to stick with it. So this ad by Coca-Cola is a really cool example of stable diffusion being used. It's done in a similar way to the technique Corridor Crew used to create their anime that I talked about in a previous video. And I found a breakdown of the process on Reddit. Basically, they composite a mix of actors, real scenes, and 3D animation and used stable diffusion as a kind of stylistic rendering. It's actually just insane to see how much work goes into a commercial like this for poison. But the amount of time saved using Stable Diffusion is huge, and it gives it a really cool style. And then another one in the realm of poison, Wendy's made a deal with Google. They're working on a customized AI for drive through ordering. They think it will give customers a better ordering experience with less miscommunication. The CEO said it will be very conversational and you won't know you're talking to anybody but an employee. With the right training, I assume it will be good at this. There's already plenty of ways you can train models on data sets that are much more complex than a Wendy's menu. Although I am curious how it will respond to things like a drunk person asking nonsensical questions. I'm gonna do that pay it forward thing. So can you make that guy behind me pay for my stuff? This one is a simulation someone created with ChatGPT programmed into NPCs. It's to help coach someone who isn't comfortable meeting new people. Hi there, I'm Tom. How are you guys enjoying the party so far? Doing this in VR to help someone with social anxiety is a pretty cool use case. I think there's a lot of potential for other things in this realm, like practicing for a job interview or preparing for a debate. Now let's jump into the biggest ChatGPT update for a while, which is access to plugins and web browsing for all pro users. To enable them, go to settings, click beta features, then switch them on. Then you click the drop down on a new chat to use them. There's over 70 plugins available. There's ones like Expedia, Kayak, Instacart, and OpenTable. So you can find flights, book hotels, order food, things like that. Those are useful, but self-explanatory and not particularly interesting. There's a couple I'm excited about, like Scholar, where you can interact with peer-reviewed data. Instead of how with ChatGPT, you get these kind of broad strokes answers and sometimes just make stuff up. With Scholar, you can ask for specifics about a paper. It can analyze it and it will link directly to its sources. Right now, it's only linked up with Springer Nature sources, but that does cover a wide array of topics. And they're also planning to add additional databases like PubMed. And this stuff is all still new, but imagine incorporating this with another plugin like Wolfram. That one's able to analyze data, algorithms, and computation across subjects. There's some really amazing possibilities. Chat with PDF is really useful. It can analyze PDFs. You just give it the URL and you can summarize it or ask it questions. The show me plugin lets ChatGPT create diagrams, which is really cool. They're adding new plugins regularly. Exploring them and finding what is applicable to you and spending a little time to implement it can be huge. I am all about creating efficient systems and workflows. There's a Benjamin Franklin quote, for every minute spent on organizing, an hour is earned. And that's the case even more so now. If you spend that earned time wisely, you can really compound your productivity and what you're able to achieve. Access to web browsing has been rolled out to pro users as well. I've had issues with it where it just takes a long time or completely fails, but the times it does work, it's been awesome. 
and it's still new, so I'm sure improvements will come quickly. This announcement about plugins and web browsing came right on the heels of Google's I.O. event. That's where they announced all the new features they're working on. And Bard has access to the internet already, and they announced very similar plugins. IBM also announced that they're working on Watson with a plan to release it in July. That feels pretty late to the party. Google had some really solid announcements. It was a four hour presentation and a lot of it's not coming out for a while. They said most of it is expected by the end of the year. So I'm just gonna do a few quick highlights. The magic editor for photos looks awesome. You can move things around or remove objects and it generates the missing information. Tons of other tools do this, but it looks like it does a great job. The immersive Google Maps looks amazing. It will generate cars on the road to simulate current traffic. You'll be able to drag a slider to see what any area looks like at any time of day or weather. It is a huge upgrade. The Universal Translator not only translates any language while making it sound like the original speaker, but it also matches their lip movements. They partnered with Adobe Firefly to create images in slides or Bard. They also have text to image, speech to text, and coding tools they're working on. Really, it's a lot of things we've already seen plenty of other companies doing, but just implemented within Google. And finally, they released this promo video partnering with Tato. 